Hi there. So, this is part three of the kind of lock pinning part setup video series. And it is the last video. And we're going to talk about master keying. We'll get to all these numbers in a moment. Um, master keying is basically having one key operate multiple locks. And there's different levels of master keying. Um, let's say you have a large facility, maybe even two buildings, and you only want certain people have access to certain things. What do you do? You master key it. Oh, I'm very sorry. That means that, you know, the manager custodial staff only has to carry one key. Um, you can have... Master and change keys, uh, change keys, master, grandmaster. Um, basically, uh, to make it simple, a change key is what you give the employees, you know, access to their office, bathroom, that kind of thing. The master key opens all the, you know, built all the doors in building A, and building B has its own set of change and master keys. The grandmaster opens all the locks. But here we just have a change key and a master key. This is our change key, this is our master, here's the bidding for both. Um, the numbers circled are the lowest key pins, and that's what we're going to put in our lock for master keying. To make the difference, we're going to put a mastering pin or a master wafer. And the way you calculate that is the absolute difference. So no negative or positive. Difference between 1 and 5 is 4. So we put a 4. No difference on chamber 2. So nothing there. Chamber 3. 1 and 7. Difference is 6. 4, 4. And then the circle numbers are key pins. A uh, note is a... Uh, master keyed system. You... You can't master key each and every cut depth. Uh, one is not a valid um, depth to master key. It's too thin. The wafers will bind up. Um, one is a valid cut in quick set. Uh, but you won't see master key quick set too much. So, um, key pins, we have... One, three, one, three, five, five. And then for our mastering pins, we have four, six, four, four. Um, and for drivers, I'll use security pins. You don't have to, but I tend to. And conveniently, that's what I have in this tray. I also have a cutaway. I hope you guys can see that with this exact bidding. Let me get a light here. And let me try to fix it to the tripod somehow. Should have thought of this before. Maybe. Let's go tip up just a little bit up and over. Just... Eh, works better if I just hold it. And we can see those mastering pins. And. Oh, oh. Messes up the white balance. See those mastering pins in there? Oh, that's a good view. So we have a uh, mastering pin on chamber one. Two, uh, one, three, four, and five. And here is our master key. And we'll see that when we put a master key in. 
all the driver pins are at sheer, and the master wafers are down in the plug still. And when I pull this out and put our change key in, all the master wafers are up in the Bible. So we're going to build this into this lock. I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing you need to do is gut the lock, obviously. And we're not, not going to need anything out of here but the springs and the clip. Take that clip off. And for funsies, we're going to do a speed gut here. Ready? Boom. Boom. Done. And you notice the springs for the most part stay in there. And the plug. Oops. Except the few that fall out. We're going to need a set of tweezers. I'm just going to put these springs back in where they came out of. Maybe. Put a sp spring back in here. Oh. Here. You know what? Just easier to do that. We'll put them in one at a time when we put drivers. Um, so this is how our plug is going to be oriented. So this thing comes in really handy for master keying. I'm going to take a spring, put in chamber six. And put a um, mass and a uh, driver in, push it down. You know, depending how long this takes, I may or may not time lapse it. We'll see because you guys have seen me do this before, and I wrote. I don't think it's anyone's favorite thing to sit through and watch. And so right in in two. Spool in three. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm working from back to six, five, four. So I rated two or three. And a standard in one. Okay, so now to put the Key pins and master wafers in. I drop my key pin in. I'm going to drop my master wafer. If there is one. Sometimes these can be a little hard to go in. There we go. Key pin. And then only in two. Key pin, master wafer in three. Key pin. Master way through four keep him master way from five. And a key pin in chamber six. Let me slide this out. And we put it in our lock. And lock it up. 
and put a clip on. And now we check. So here's our manager's our front door lock and master key. Goes and works. Pull out. Here's your change key, the key you give the employees, the you know, office workers. Doesn't work. You know, but the key to, let's say, the bathroom or their office. Their change key works. And your master key also works. Just like in our cutaway here. Once again, this change key, wafers above the shear line, and that's not always the case. Sometimes the wafers are below the shear line with the change key. That's just how it happened to work on this lock. And you can see, and we turn it. I'm going to get a camera light, so I need to. Oh, wait. Is this the... Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. So oh, you can see we have a uh, pull that key out and we do that there and no way for so below the share line. And with Master King you have to be careful because you can create what's called an incidental Master key, meaning if you have too many wafers, you can create a key that may not even be in the system and it also happens to work this lock. Like in this case, we could have a key that is, let's say, right here in the middle, chamber three, and that uh, number, what is that, six master wafer sits below the shear line. That will also operate this lock. So that's just something to be aware of. And master again. Anyway, that's all I got for today. And this series, thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for hanging out through this series. And after this video, I'll be back to regular picking types of videos. I just thought I'd do this and put this out there. Thanks for watching.